Yeah, in fact, we, we invited um, Jerome and Wei because, um, yeah, there's actually exciting stuff also happening just with, let's say, the classical image. I, I guess most of you, like there's Fiji, right? And there's also something called image J2. <laughs> I guess it's not even completely clear what that exactly is, but then, and then there's the whole big data viewer ecosystem and all the side Java and all these modern things, which are great, but actually also really stuff that is just plain image J is, there's still interesting things happening. And I thought it would be just cool to um, hear about that. And then uh, actually Jerome, he's very active there and contributing a lot of fantastic code. So we thought it would be great to hear what's like the latest things. And then um, we, or Jerome also took Wei on board, which uh, who some of you might know. So he's really a wizard <laughs> when it comes to all this modern cloud stuff. So whenever he gives a talk, I like at some point I'm like, just wow, I completely lost. <laughs> so it's pretty amazing. And uh, so he also made image J run in the browser, which I guess is something we will talk about. So yeah, thank you, Jerome and Wei for coming. I'm uh, really looking forward. And then I guess, um, okay, if you have questions, like if you have burning questions, I would suggest you just say something like verbally because we, the speakers may not look at your raised hands. Uh, but after the talk, then we can just use the raise hands button. Okay, I guess Jerome, uh, you start or? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Hi, hello everyone. Thank you, Christian. <clears throat> so thanks a lot uh, for uh, inviting us uh, to this talk. Uh, please just uh, wave uh, your hands or your body <laughs> if you have a question. Anyway, this talk, uh, time I'm, I'm, I'm giving this talk so I, I can stop anywhere it will be a mess uh, anyway <laughs> so do not hesitate to interrupt if you have questions or, or comments uh, so I, I'm usually more uh, comfortable with, with talking from uh, my own work <laughs> uh, in this case uh, I will be talking about uh, work from uh, other people's people as well so <clears throat> I did uh, like a, a review of uh, the current state of uh, ImageJ with the help of uh, a few persons, of course, a way that will uh, introduce uh, ImageJ for, for the browser later, which is a major uh, item for today. And also some input from uh, other contributors, Michael Schmidt from uh, Wien University, Stein Röhrwirk, from uh, Trondheim, Norway, and Norbert Bischer from Amsterdam. And all of this, of course, is built uh, upon the work of uh, Wayne Rasband. And uh, as you can see, I found uh, the most ancient artifact <laughs> about uh, image, the first version of uh, image J, it is here. And uh, it's known to be a very old uh, software. And uh, we might wonder if it's uh, still worth using. Uh, this is a usual timeline that you, you see in every like image training, any image conference or paper uh, with the two reference papers, one from uh, 2012, which is already nine years old and stated, uh, can you see the, the mouse on my screen or not? Yes, okay, thank you. So. Nine years ago, it was already 20 years of uh, image analysis with uh, the image J and NIH image. Now we are nine years later uh, and uh, we are reaching the 24 years of uh, image J, which means that uh, I put a, a little bit, uh, a bunch of stars there uh, because the, 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 the students, the new students that, that, that we are currently teaching image J they were born after after the software itself, so it's it's always a little bit awkward to to <laughs> to introduce uh, students to a software that is old, even older than they are, and they sometimes do not take it very seriously in the be to, in the beginning. But uh, there, there there's a lot to. And the, this timeline is the the the, the start of Java itself. Okay, uh, 19, 1996 is the first version of, of Java. So 
the image J timeline is uh, basically following the, the Java timeline as well. It worked with the first version of Java and it still works with the latest version of Java, which is uh, in itself something very special. Here is the oldest uh, screenshot that I could find from uh, image J and it, it, had a, it had a slash in, the, in, its, name, in its name, interesting. Uh, and uh, but the reasons the reasons to to use image j at that time were, were exactly the same uh, like uh, why we we still use it today and maybe we will use it still for many many more years or at least a couple of more years uh, it's cross platform software it's basically a, a multi dimensional image view viewer uh, limited to five dimensions we will talk about this later and uh, it's, it's not only a viewer, but also an image processing uh, library. And uh, a very interesting thing is that it, it has uh, built-in utilities uh, to help uh, process the images and take uh, data out of the images. And I listed a few of them, regions of interest, uh, re results table to, to display numbers, uh, numerical fits, uh, plots, uh, Fourier transform, and uh, a set of utilities to for file input output. A very interesting stuff is that it carries from almost uh, back to the beginning, backwards compatibility, which means that you can uh, start a project with ImageJ and you can probably uh, finish your project with, uh, with ImageJ and it will still work and you can probably also use it for many more years and it will it will be stable in time which is something very important and of course it's an extensible uh, software with, uh, with with plugins or scripts so so these items were there from the very beginning this this is from uh, uh, 97 this, this screenshot but the points that i i'm listing here uh, are still are still valid today uh, if you have if you have never done image processing, it's, it's still a good uh, software to start because there's a, a huge amount of uh, resources to, for, for users or for developers to, to start, to start uh, using or developing uh, image processing uh, stuff, software. Uh, of course, uh, there's the uh, very comprehensive uh, online manual, which is maybe a little bit outdated. That's a, that's a, a point, uh, maybe to raise. Uh, and there are a lot also, uh, this is mainly for users. There are, there are a lot of uh, YouTube videos, uh, short videos, longer videos. Uh, every research lab or every university uh, provides uh, image J uh, classes or uh, image processing based on image J classes, which is a very important point. Um, and there are a lot of uh, great tutorials as well. I'm listing a few there. Sorry uh, for Albert, I, I uh, forgot to include the link to his tutorials, but I, 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 will, I will add it later. So a lot of uh, documentation and resources to, to start. One of the main uh, interest is that uh, it's a simple software. It's simple looking, even sometimes a little bit too simple. It, when I talk to colleagues and I, I, I tell them, oh, you, you should try image J for your question. They, they said, I, I opened image J, but there's nothing there. <laughs> there's just nothing, it's, it's empty. Just this toolbar. Okay, so this is the look of it, the graphical user interface of it. But the, the real complexity is behind. You have to navigate the menus, you have to, try stuff to, to look at the existing example macros. And then you discover that it's a, it's a huge software. It looks empty. It looks so simple, but it's, a, it's really a, a huge piece of software. Uh, talking about simplicity, uh, I found it interesting that uh, Wayne Rosband uh, try to make image J even simpler with e each version, okay? And if you look at the former NIH image toolbar, was this one, this is the current uh, image J toolbar. 
there are a lot of icons that are, are, are have been removed from the toolbar itself. Okay, so the simplicity is a, is achieved by uh, removing stuff or uh, putting them in, in different places. Of course, for example, the drawing tools are there. They were removed from the main toolbar, but they are still available uh, if you need them uh, in the in the tool set uh, tool sets uh, menu, which is over there. I, I can I come and see it. It's here. Okay. So this is a, a little bit the approach that I like. That it's uh, the simplicity is achieved in, in the Zen way by removing stuff. And uh, it's not uh, software that that adds uh, uh, clutter to, to to itself. Just an example of clutter that I tried to introduce to ImageJ. Last year, I made a suggestion that we could use um, an icon sheet like this, which would be a PNG file uh, with which uh, ev everyone could uh, design its own icons and then put it in the ImageJ folder. And then when ImageJ starts, it would read this and uh, create uh, custom icons. But this unfortunately got rejected, or maybe fortunately, I don't know. <laughs> um, and in, indeed, uh, Norbert Bischer, he, he told me that that's a, he formulated this, and this is a temptation to produce a, what he calls a extra fancy features, okay? Things that uh, you don't really need, okay? You, maybe you think it's, it's very, <laughs> it's nice, it pleases you, but you don't really need it, need them. So this kind of uh, stuff is not is not in ImageJ, and uh, when I when I uh, suggested it to to Wayne, he replied that he, he liked that the ImageJ toolbar was plain and simple, and he, he would like it to 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 stay like this. Okay, and this is very different from uh, from other software that you can think of that uh, will add a lot of um, a crazy user interface, but in the end, the users they get uh, they get lost, uh, I, and in the end, I think it's good that it has the, the system uh, uh, look and feel, and so, so that the user is immediately familiar with it. And you don't have to, to, to learn or to discover a, a different uh, uh, skin or graphical user interface. I also saw this, for example, in, in Inkscape that I recently use uh, more. If you look at uh, Ink, Inkscape tutorials uh, on, on YouTube, it's very strange because you have uh, all kinds of skins or look and feels, and then uh, it's very difficult to learn because you, you don't even recognize the icons between different skins. So yes, I think uh, keeping the, the graphical user interface as, as, as similar to itself uh, as possible is, is a good thing. And this is a, a good point. Uh, still, I, didn't, I did not uh, 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 give up. <laughs> And um, I, I made the action bars uh, plugin uh, able to inject itself to the ImageJ user interface. So if you really need to provide the, the, the user with a workflow or with a very exposed functions, for example, for beginner users, it's uh, maybe you can do it this way huh? with, a, with a plugin that injects just a few functions uh, that, that will be uh, adapted to uh, this uh, group of user needs. And it can, if you don't need it, it's not there and you get just a simple uh, classical user interface. Um, I, I taught myself uh, ImageJ by writing uh, macros or plugins and uh, mostly by using those two resources. Uh, the ImageJ naming list um, on the left and the ImageJ news page. Uh, a few years ago, I did a data analysis on the mailing list, which was interesting uh, because it's, it showed at that time that uh, there were no unanswered uh, messages, which is very important for new users. If you ask a question, you, you get an answer. And also that it it's, it's also usually short answers. Uh, there, there were, I think, two or three uh, aver on average uh, answers per message. So any, any question is solved or resolved in, in just uh, two, three uh, emails. That was very interesting. 
but for today uh, seminar so this was this plot uh, in which i ex extracted all uh, uh, mailing list archive and then passed the subject dates etc uh, for today <laughs> because uh, christian explained me that uh, i was expected to give a uh, image j one uh, version one uh, or official image j uh, talk only I decided to to go for the image news page and uh, downloaded uh, every version that I that I could find. Uh, there are basically two. Merge everything and then did a, a small uh, parsing of, of this uh, news section. And what wh what I found was uh, rather interesting. This. So this, for example, is the <coughs> bug fixes and uh, image J commits by Wayne Rasband. So basically, uh, Wayne Rasband's uh, activity on, on image J. In the, the the whole release notes is uh, about uh, fourteen thousand lines, and each line carries a, a specific message like uh, "I fixed this" or uh, "This person contributed uh, this plugin or this this macro, etc." So this, for example, is a any lines in the 14,000 that carries the fix or uh, thanks to keywords, okay? And this, this is extremely interesting because uh, you, you start to understand uh, why the software is successful uh, because there were so many fixes and they were due to so many persons. And every time the, there's a fix or a contribution, uh, the the person's contribution were, were, was acknowledged. So th this is very interesting. And you can see that the, um, the, the rate or the rhythm of those uh, fixes and, uh, did, did not really vary over the 24 years. So it's a very stable effort by Wayne Rosmond. Really extraordinary uh, dedication to from, from the software developer. Uh, there is even more uh, details here for the last 10 years you can see uh, daily contributions, uh, which I did not pass further, but you can see that uh, there, there were sometimes a, a week or two weeks uh, without any contributions, but uh, usually several per, per week. You can also see a shift uh, from this year with uh, contributions that, that, that amount to the same quantity, but they are um, like uh, not as often, okay? Maybe not every week but then you get a contribution with more commits. So more fixes or more, more, uh, more new features. So all this, uh, the fact that uh, I should, I should maybe go back Can I go back. I don't know how to go back actually. Oh, right here. Um, the fact that uh, the persons are uh, always acknowledged I think contributes to the to the success of image chain. I mean, you like to see your name <laughs> on, on that page. You're kind of proud uh, the first time it happens. And each time it happens, you, you're kind of proud because you know that what you've done uh, can, can also be useful to other persons. You know this feeling because you're also software developers. Uh, another point that is uh, really uh, crucial is that uh, it, it's so simple to obtain the source code. Uh, basically, it's those three lines. So the source code is uh, on the GitHub web website here, GitHub repository. So you can simply git clone this, then change directory to, to the directory that you just downloaded, and you can build the software uh, with the third line on, on build. So this is uh, what happens in the video here. Uh, compile takes a few seconds. And then you get your own uh, compiled version of image. Once you've done this, you have uh, on your computer on the right, you have the exact copy of uh, the GitHub repository. That's the, the idea for maybe for some of you that are not uh, developers, you can, you can uh, discover what, what this means. And uh, the source code, I have to say, is very easy to navigate. I, I am a biologist by training, uh, plant <laughs> biologist even, 
so I, I, I was never really trained uh, to, um, to, to Java or to, to, to writing code. And I have to say that it's it's an easy to navigate code. So the, the classes named there are they they talk for themselves, and uh, if you look into the code, it's also self-explanatory. Well, no, not usually. I learned uh, I learned Java by looking at the image source code. So if you want to make a modification, uh, what you just did is uh, forking the code. So you download a, a new ver a version of the current code and then you can uh, modify it. It's also very easy to modify thanks to the command finder. Uh, you can just launch any command and you can see in the command finder the class name, which is responsible for this uh, particular action in the, in the software. Uh, this, this corresponds to the folder uh, the class is in. So you can go straight to this class change whatever you, you want. For example, here I just change the background color and uh, you type ant again, ant build. Then it builds a new version of ImageJ with your modification included. Now you have a fork a version of ImageJ that is uh, just a new computer with a new feature. Uh, this one is not so interesting, but uh, hopefully you can find something more interesting to do. And then uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you can go and you can use it for yourself or you can share it with colleagues. And um, this is always possible because the, the, the license, image license is so cool, so permissive. This is the license text from inside the, the image code. You are free to do anything you want with this source code. So no question, no, no hesitation. Uh, but the last part is very interesting as well. Uh, Wayne likes to, 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 to see this change and, uh, and to be notified of this change because possibly it, it can be useful to someone else. And this is why I think it was so successful. Uh, people contribute back uh, what they are uh, forking, what they're doing for themselves. They, they often com contribute back to, to imagery. So now I passed even further the, the release notes. Uh, and this is what happens, okay? I, I did the world cloud uh, and you can see the, 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 the persons that are the most often uh, cited in the release notes, okay? So the, 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 big, the bigger, biggest names, uh, those are the persons that I contacted uh, and, and who also sent comment, uh, comments to me to prepare this talk. Uh, basically, Michael Schmidt, Norbert Discher, and Stein Röhrweg. It And I, I see my name also there. Uh, it's not really, uh, you cannot really trust this, okay? Uh, it's not because your name is uh, very small that you had a small contribution. Some some people, you, you almost can, cannot see their name, but they, are, they had a major contribution like uh, Cesar Tigaret, he did the plugin control panel. This is a major piece uh, of uh, image user interface that is used by many persons and also ignored by, by some, but uh, it's major stuff. Or maybe the command finder by uh, Mark Langer, Jonas Schindelin, Curtis, <coughs> and uh, Thiago. Uh, so, don't really, of, of course, the, the biggest names, they are there because they are almost there from, from the beginning, from 24 years. So this is why you get a lot of contributions and your, your name get, gets bigger. But uh, don't, don't trust this. What, what I really uh, want to keep from this cloud is that there are a lot, a lot of uh, contributors, hundreds. I can't remember the name. I will, I will maybe provide the, the raw data for this if you want to do your, your own analysis or find back your own uh, contributions if you want. So there are a lot of contributors. That's the main point I want to raise. In a next uh, step, I looked at the plugins world. And this is interesting because you can see that there were a lot of plugins in the early uh, 2000 uh, something. And then uh, there were less and less plugins. This is kind of a pity, uh, but maybe, uh, I mean, we have, we, have to, we have to find an explanation for, for this, okay? Uh, even myself, I, I, 
my, my most uh, important plugins were contributed early. Okay, uh, the LSM reader, for example, with uh, Yannick Kremp and uh, Patrick Pirot, or the Action Bar plugin, which which were was out in two thousand six, but then uh, was not very successful for almost ten years, and now it's only gets successful now. And then the figure chain. So what does it mean? Probably it means that uh, all easy stuff was done in the beginning, also uh, all use, useful stuff. And then we sort of reach a, a plateau of new, um, of new plugins. And this, does this mean that, that there is a loss of interest in Imagia? I don't think so, but maybe uh, it's more like a, a maturity plateau maybe, I don't know. And also in the meantime, I, I'm not uh, adding this to this timeline, but there are a lot of, uh, other software, so probably uh, developers were also dragged to, to other software. Then I, I looked at the macro keyword, and this is very interesting because uh, first of all, it doesn't start from the beginning. It only starts here in the early 2000, but it's uh, very stable then. Uh, everybody contributes macro or uh, fixes to the macro language or improvements of the macro language. And this is a very active uh, phase, um, still a very active phase. And you, you, you cannot see it slowing down. This is why I think the, the, the macro language itself of, of Image is uh, something very important and contributes to the, to the success uh, of uh, 2021 uh, Image. Of course, uh, here, the, the macro language was there even in the NIH image, okay? And uh, this was uh, Wayne's statement at that time. The best way to learn how to write your own macros is by studying and customizing the many example macros. This is still true. You have a lot of uh, example macros and uh, this is the easiest way to, to learn the macro language. But there is a, another one and which explains that uh, it only started in, in this, in this uh, time, 2001. It's the <coughs> uh, macro recorder. This was added uh, 22nd of June, uh, 2001, which means that we missed, we missed the 20th anniversary of the, of the recorder. And this is a pity because it's really a, a very important piece of, uh, of image. Why? Because it uh, allows you to record anything that you do with a user interface and uh, turn this into a, a, a program, a macro program, which you can uh, run again and get the same results. Or you can uh, also share with uh, other persons and, and you can also uh, get uh, the same results, hopefully. I have a link here. So I don't want to spoil <laughs> Waze uh, talk, but um, you can even uh, like embed it in, in a in a URL, and you can you can also share the same workflow in in the form of a macro language uh, over uh, image.js. How do I get back to like this? Okay. So the macro recorder is definitely a very important uh, part of uh, Im image success. Uh, but uh, there are other macro utilities that are important. Uh, of course, the text editor, the function finder in ImageJ, which is replaced later in Fiji by the, by the like uh, code completion. But it's a little bit the same idea. Recorder I just talked about. Um, and uh, something that I, 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 I'm so sorry that it does not uh, exist in Fiji is a macro debugger. So it's a... Um, utility of the image text editor with which you can run the macro step by step. And uh, you get a debug window here with the state of the variables. And uh, to my knowledge, it's not available in, in Fiji and not uh, easy to, of course you have image in Fiji, but uh, it's, it's not easy to open a standard text editor in, uh, in Fiji. And it, it makes no sense to, to get out of the Fiji script editor. So uh, this is something I would like to, to see <clears throat> in the Fiji script editor, uh, something that is very specific to, to image. And the, the macros are not uh, only useful as, as, as the small programs that you produce, but they are also, they exist as such in, in many, many uh, commands or parts of, of image that are listed here. So 
so because the macro language uh, <clears throat> is so stably growing <laughs> and uh, its use is growing, uh, I also wanted to highlight the, the trend that uh, it, it's getting better as well. It, it has been criticized a lot in the past in macro language because it was not uh, like a real programming language. <laughs> But um, I think it's getting better. So for example, the, many of the functions were uh, grouped in uh, function groups. Uh, for example, the, the stack group uh, related to the display of the hyperstack window and the state, display state of the hyperstack window. Uh, with this, I could, I could even replicate uh, the, the the view bookmarks that I stole from Christian Platy browser. <laughs> it was so cool to, to see this in the Platy browser that you could bookmark a view inside the data set. So th this was uh, very nice. So I wanted to have the same for the standard image J. And it was just a few lines of uh, macro code to create this uh, uh, bookmarks table. And then you can uh, um, like uh, navigate and go back and forth uh, between different uh, bookmarks in the same data set. Uh, other uh, function groups are of course the regions of interest and the region manager that can uh, that allow, you, allow you to do almost anything you want with uh, regions of interest that are so important for, uh, for uh, analysis, but also visualization uh, uh, and highlighting uh, image parts, uh, whatever. Uh, the file functions that are also essential and the, the, these func file functions, I, I use them to, to create the, the views, uh, to parse the release notes, for example. Uh, they, are, they are so easy to use and uh, <clears throat> it's important because uh, if you compare to other programming language, uh, sometimes you have to import a lot of libraries to do the same. Uh, in this case, it's all, all built in image. The dialogues, uh, dialogue class uh, improved a little bit by stealing back <laughs> ideas from the improved di dialogues that were in Fiji. Like you can now uh, drag and drop files in the folders or file uh, fields. There's an image shoot chooser. Some, sometimes a tiny improvement, but that make a big difference for the users. You can really have nice user interface uh, so that user can just uh, fill this form and proceed with the analysis. Of course, the tables and, and plots class got a lot of improvements, even recently. And this is a, a, one example you, you, you can in the image tables, you can almost uh, do what you can do in Excel. You can have a, like a, you can apply macro formula to, to lines and to reorder, to, to apply formulas to, to tables basically, and, and then plot the results. The fits, function fits uh, got a lot of improvement also recently. And uh, this was just a, <coughs> Just for the fun, <laughs> I, I plot the image versions against time just to see if image J could e ever reach a version two. It's unlikely. So that's, uh, that, that's the good news. But it's also uh, fun to, I must tell you that Michael Schmidt, who helped me uh, with a few ideas uh, with this stock, he told me that he, he barely does uh, image processing. He does only numerical analysis. And usually he has uh, like uh, values and he push, pushes them in uh, one dimensional images and then uses uh, image J numerical classes to process this uh, one dimension image and then use the fit and uh, Fourier transform everything. So he does not, uh, doesn't do uh, image processing at all. That's, that's, that's crazy. He's the major contributor uh, after Wayne Rosman. He is not in image processing. I like this. All these uh, uh, improvements, they are uh, targeted to the users always. 
for example, the definition of colors was always a mess because there are several uh, ways of specifying a, a color. You can have a named color, you can have a color code, you can have a value, x value, or you can have a, like a list of three arguments, or you can have a, an array of three elements. <laughs> Uh, so this, this, and this, they are used uh, in different functions uh, of, with, with different manners. So recently there was uh, the improvement that the color uh, function group allows easy uh, translation be between those types. This is a, a major improvement for new users, even if it looks uh, like a, an anecdote, I agree. Finally, <clears throat> there is also this uh, IJ uh, function group that has not so many functions, but I want to, to highlight the checksum, uh, IJ.checksum uh, function and how, how it went for, for this. So because this, I think it's interesting because it's an example of how, how it worked uh, in real life. First of all, there was this uh, message by uh, Chris Mailing on the mailing list, the classical image mailing list, because the the MJ forum does not, uh, I mean, everyone is not subscribed or does not visit the, the forum, even if it has a, it is a huge success, but uh, a lot of persons go to the image J mailing list still. So he asked uh, if there is a way to lock uh, an, an image J file. So I, I answered with a, an example plugin that I did that computed the, the checksum of the, of the file and then added a, a tag or something. Then uh, Norbert Bischer, <laughs> suggested that this would be added to, to a macro function like this as a checksum. And then he talked to Wayne as well. And a few days, or uh, in this case was a, a bit longer, over a month later, Wayne committed the ij.checksum uh, macro function. So it's always driven by the user need. That's, that's, that's the, the point. But also uh, Wayne is very uh, careful that it does not uh, clutter the code. Uh, Norbert suggested the checksum function, but this means a, one more function in the macro language. And this is a maintenance burden. If you look at the, I can, I can show you that. If you look inside the imagery code, <clears throat> you have one part is a, like a reserved keywords for the, for the image macro functions, okay? And if you add a new, a new function, you have to, you have to go to this file and you, you have to add a, a new reserved keyword, etc. So it's not so scalable. So rather, uh, Wayne decided to, to add this to the IJ dot something function group. Okay. So it, it's, it's now all, all is, is done in the do IJ function in the functions.java file. So it's uh, probably here. If, if the name is checksum, then you do checksum function, it's there, okay? And it, not, not only the, the maintenance burden of the macro uh, system is uh, made lower by choosing this approach, but also the, the same checksum uh, get hash method was added to the tools class of image. And this means that also uh, other plugins can now use uh, plugins in Java, they can use the get hash method from the tools class. Okay. So I'm showing you this because uh, just to show how careful uh, Wayne is when it comes to, to not uh, cluttering the code of image. And this, this explains why, 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 why you can keep and uh, maintain the, the code for so long. All this, as I showed, did show you, uh, makes that the image macro language uh, is really a, a, a standard uh, programming language that is, is used for image processing. To the point that even the, the newest uh, plugins that are uh, produced by uh, very uh, good uh, programmers, uh, that they, they always take care to, to make them uh, macro compatible because they know that the, the user base uh, know a bit of macro language or at least can learn a bit of macro language or at least can record a bit of macro language. 
this is the case for the DP image. You can uh, record a DP image run plugin. So it makes it easier to process uh, new images with the same uh, network. This is also uh, true for the CLIJ uh, GPU accelerated image processing from uh, Robert. Whenever something is not uh, available from the macro language, you, you can even easily uh, make it available. This is a recent example that I, <coughs> I did for uh, Omero to connect to Omero servers. What you have to do in your plugin, you just have to import a few uh, classes here. You have to declare a new extension descriptors, like here, open server. And then you just have to tell your plugin what to do when the ext open server command is used from the macro language, okay? <coughs> so even if a given plugin is not directly compatible to the macro language, it's very easy to do by just extending it. So the macro language is there to extend image J, but you can even extend the macro language itself. Uh, almost last point is <clears throat> this slide. Um, the macro language allows uh, to integrate uh, in other external workflows. This is very important. Uh, Stein Hörwig, uh, provided this uh, title for this slide because he, he uses this a lot. Uh, and he told me that he, at the, at the system uh, level, at the operating system level, he, he does uh, uh, extensive integration with the Windows Explorer. So he has uh, uh, many, many scripts, dozens of scripts that uh, he uses uh, in Windows Explorer. So he can just uh, go to a file, right click, and then apply a, a function that is integrated with the operating system. But behind the scenes, it's image J that, that is calling a, a macro. So this can be done in uh, Mac OS as well with a uh, automator, for example. Or you can do this as well with an external program. Uh, I give you three examples, one of which is uh, released, the Inkscape image J figure extensions, in which you can, uh, in the Inkscape uh, program, that is uh, like a design, uh, program like Illustrator, you can, uh, you can specify uh, panels by the means of a macro language from inside Inkscape. And then the extension takes this macro, have image A executed and, and reads back the image and integrates in, in, the, in your figure. Uh, the two other examples have never been released. We are, we are just using them internally. internally. <clears throat> One is called the LSM watch. It's uh, basically a system utility that watch, watches, a, watches a folder and then um, applies a given macro to any new file that appears in a folder. Okay. You can use it in uh, microscopes to, to live process uh, images that are as they are acquired or saved. Uh, the third one is the IJ Galaxy, <coughs> which is a little bit old now but uh, it's like a, a server to which you can upload images. They will be processed and then you can download the results. Probably this is re really outdated compared to what way we will we'll show later. Of course, there are a lot of uh, limitations to image J, as you know. Uh, it, it has a poor uh, 3D viewer, only the Kais Bartel volume viewer, but the standard classical 3D viewer does not work reliably with, with image J. It does not handle a very large data set or multimodal data set. Doesn't have a 3D ROIS. It's a pain to, to install add-ons. Even macros, you have to explain your users how to, how to install their macros like uh, open this folder, put this in this file there, and then restart, whatever. Uh, most of this, of course, uh, points, they are addressed by uh, Fiji versions of the, of, of, 
of many plugins, okay? Uh, the difference I see in, in Fiji is that Fiji is not, is a little bit more than uh, ImageJ. Uh, and, and people that like, like Stefan, for example, who, who develop uh, uh, very high quality plugins for large data sets, uh, whatever, uh, they do not really use uh, ImageJ1 uh, image structure behind the scenes. They use uh, Imlib or things like this, Imlib2, things like this. So they use Fiji as a, as a vector for their, for their product, for their, for their plugins, which is very good. And, and those uh, then can address uh, those points. But sometimes they do not take advantage of all what exists in ImageJ1. You, you probably cannot have uh, everything. The last point, uh, wanted to raise is that uh, with image is that it has no predictable release cycle. And this I think is a, a small problem uh, because uh, as a user, you, you never really know uh, which version you, you, should, you should work with. As a de developer, or even if you develop image itself, or if you contribute features to image itself, you always want to work with the latest versions, for latest version, of course. But this is for the simple user. This is this is a pain, and uh, if I compare to to Inkscape, they have a, a much more uh, reasonable uh, versioning scheme or release uh, cycle scheme. Uh, for example, they know already that uh, version 1.2 will be for April 2022, and everybody is aware of that. And uh, in the meantime, you have to use uh, version 1.1. You can still use uh, like uh, previews or daily bits, but you, you know that you're doing this and it, it's not so easy to, to do this. But if you need uh, like uh, a future feature, you have to wait for the, for the next uh, release cycle, which I think is reasonable for users. <clears throat> uh, I, I think, um, I skipped a few uh, more slides, but I want, now I will uh, give the, the screen to Wei by going back to this uh, early <laughs> description of ImageJ, which was from the beginning designed to be either an applet or an application. In, I, and I think in, the, in this order, it was maybe first uh, because Java was, was first a browser thing and, and then the G JDK was released. So it could also be run uh, as an application, but uh, it's interesting to see that uh, the mission statement uh, that Wayne has set uh, to himself uh, for, and, and for ImageJ is still exactly the same compared to uh, many years ago, 24 years ago. So at that point, uh, Java was version 1.1, and hot Java was the browser version of, uh, of Java. So way, uh, unless, unless there are some uh, comments or, uh, or questions now, I will uh, give the, the screen to way. So first I would like to thank to the organizers and also Jerome to invite me, have me in. Um, so I'm gonna, um, so my name is Wei, I'm from uh, KTH University and SciLab Lab at, in Stockholm. I'm currently a postdoc uh, in Emma Lundberg's group. Um, so I'm gonna briefly introduce our work on uh, ImageJ JavaScript, which aims to bring the image to the browser. Um, I will just briefly mention the kind of story where we were to, I mean, we, I didn't start this idea uh, on my own, but it was really started in 2019 when we had this uh, hackathon in Dresden organized by Florian and, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, uh, other people, Kirsty, you know, uh, Christian was there, also there. Um, and at, so this is the uh, Bob, he, he actually developed this uh, Java to script, which is a compiler which can compile um, Java to JavaScript such that they can run in the browser. So initially I didn't believe that until he kind of showed me that it's kind of a, a mind blowing because, um, and then we, we decided to, okay, how about let's try with image A 
but we didn't start with image j instead we we start with inglip because it's the has um, the dependency is much simpler and then it indeed works you know which is uh, kind of a a uh, super exciting moment. And you can see that we have this uh, demo running in the browser um, and everyone is super excited. And then to move forward to image A and then, you know, there apparently is much, because because one, one problem with JavaScript is that the tool chain is not so complete. Um, so you need to do a lot of manual work on, um, you know, compiling and get the source code of each dependency. Um, and then after a few months, for example, and then I was looking for different options for this. And then I found another library, which is called ShapeJ. It's a commercial uh, compiler tool, which allows you to um, just throw in a jar file and then run the command line. And then you will get another, a bunch of a JavaScript file. And, um, and then you can run it in the browser. I tried it and uh, it was, kind of amazing that it works, you know, in the first time I tried it. Um, so I was, I mean, obviously it's not perfect. There's, I need to fix a lot of stuff and then, but I mean, it's already kind of an um, um, achievement because you can think how different are these two languages, right? So you have Java, um, which is a pure static language. And, um, you know, in JavaScript, it's completely different. Um, and and they managed to make it run in the browser. So uh, what is ImageJ JavaScript exactly? So as I said, ImageJ compiled into JavaScript with this compiler called ChapJ. Um, and it runs completely in the browser. And we also add the offline capabilities such that you only run it once, and then we will pull, catch all those files in your browser. With a modern browser, you can actually run it offline without internet, which this is a, um, also good for privacy purpose, for example. And the other thing is that we, um, which is something unique, which you don't get from the uh, regular Fiji image -A, um, version, which that we can run on the tablet and mobile devices. So a lot of people are interested in this and they try it on the iPad, for example. Uh, this is essentially good for, for example, annotation, right? You can use those pens, for example, to do annotation, which is cool. Um, and then the other thing is that um, we try to integrate, make it even more. I mean, also because there's a lot of uh, drawbacks with running in the browser constraints due to security reasons. And such that we um, integrate our other project called Enjoy. Um, Enjoy essentially a platform plugin power framework runs in the browser to support uh, scientific tools to um, give you know, better you know, interactivity and also to support our machine learning tools. So with this, we can add additional features with some of them, which is not the original image I has. For example, um, I mean, this is 3D volume rendering, for example, which is very smooth and nice. And we also try to support the ZAR, for example, because there's a lot of, uh, um, for example, memory issues within the browser. It's, um, it cannot have a huge memory, so it's definitely with this kind of more scalable file format would help. And then we have cell post, deep image integration. These are all, all the experimentals. Um, you know, we try to test different, um, you know, plugins and features. Um, so I'm gonna, um, so to see it in action, you just need to type in your browser, right? ij.enjoy.io. Also works on a mobile phone, for example. Um, I'm gonna switch to here. I will just give a brief, you know, um, overview of this. So first I want to show you, for example, um, the 3D rendering, for example, we have, um, because the browser doesn't support OpenGL, for example. So the original 3D plugin will not work here. So what we do is that we, uh, as I said, we integrate with Enjoy such that we can connect the, this image and with, other Enjoy plugins. So essentially this one, ITK VTK Viewer, is uh, um, an Enjoy plugin developed from uh, Mats, by, by Mats from Kitware, the company. Um, and you, you can see that you can uh, do this kind of uh, volume rendering, um, which works nicely also on mobile devices, for example. Um, and you have, you know, different options, you know, you can change. 
Um, and then I will quickly show you, I mean, everything else is very much similar to image J, except there's some, you know, edge cases might not work directly, but most of features are still there. And we, because we have this Enjoy integration, we have this additional, for example, uh, script editor, um, and where you can, you know, uh, has better syntax highlighting. Um, and the original one, we um, also added, for example, um, let me just show you a, a few other features, for example, um, let's say deep image J. Um, so there's also a deep image J demo. Deep image J is the, um, it's a deep learning library for running uh, to process images. So we obviously we cannot compile TensorFlow everything to run in the browser. But what we did is that took a shortcut to take the TensorFlow JavaScript version and use the Enjoy API to connect them. So such that we can what we can do is that we reuse the graphical interface of DeepMJ, but swap out the uh, deep, deep learning um, library from TensorFlow or PyTorch to uh, TensorFlow JavaScript. So that you can run, for example, uh, run uh, this kind of analysis directly in the browser. Um, and this plugin is still um, in experimental state, but I think it, we, we just release it and uh, so that people can play with it. Um, and because the, the, the uh, resource is constrained in the browser, it's a bit slow, uh, but it does work, you know. Um, and and I'm gonna mention later that also their ongoing effort trying to improve the, um, for example, web GPU, try to uh, bring the modern power of the GPUs to the browser, such that uh, we will improve a lot later. And then we have also this, uh, um, for example, NGF experimental um, support. For example, you can take a link from the uh, IDR, right? And this is a jar file, so you just need the link. And then what you see here is that it's a lazy uh, stack, which when you uh, browse through this uh, slide, the chunks will be pulled direct dynamically to the browser. Um, hold on, I think it, depend, it depends on the internet speed, I think. Um, okay, it's a bit slow. Um, yeah, so, so you, you do see it. Um, so when the, the idea is that you, when you have a huge file, a massive file, for example, and you can pull um, the corresponding chunks to here, although there's other limitations, for example, uh, it doesn't support uh, you know, chunks on the XY plane, for example, this is one of the limitations that it, I mean, we discuss with when and there's some um, way to improve in the future. Um, and then this is just a different um, um, deep image, um, Im image JavaScript features. And I think you already see uh, Jerome also showed you that we also support this uh, you know, um, URL such that you can, for example, you type plugin equal to something. Um, and then you can share this link on, you know, for example, Twitter, and then it's increased, um, you know, so people don't need to download anything or just, they just click and then they will be able to reproduce this macro or load an image, for example. And then there's another, um, we have this uh, GitHub repo, which um, has all the APIs and uh, it's not, it's a bit messy right now, but you know, we, uh, as the time goes, we are gonna improve then. Um, and the other thing is that um, this um, Chrome extension made by Jerome, um, says that when you install it in Chrome and then it's actually provide this kind of a, when you vi visit, for example, some online database, for example, human protein alas, right? And it shows this uh, icon nicely where you can just click and then it will load the images, which is makes uh, um, better to integrate with other, um, you know, resources. And then um, I'm gonna switch quickly to this and it also works on, for example, um, you know, GIST, for example, and when you have a macro here, it will detect this image macro. Um, and then when you click and it will actually load this script directly to run directly in the um, image uh, JavaScript. Sorry. Yeah, so this is the uh, overview of the image I just clicked. 
I'm gonna close this one and go back to here. Um, and you can see that. So actually this is a load from the browser itself. It's not doing every time pull the data from uh, the server. So for example, this one, right? And you can, uh, let me just share. Sorry, let me just load an image. For example, this is macro. I think it does club colorblind friendly, <laughs> turn an image to make it uh, colorblind friendly. I took it from Jerome. Um, so for example, you have a figure here and then you can uh, you know, just run this, right? Um, so make it colorblind friend friendly. Um, and so we also added some additional other features. For example, now we have this uh, share with QR code, right? And you can scan this. So we uh, essentially what we did is not just an URL in this, we essentially encode this string directly into this QR code. And if you want, you can take out your phone and then you know you can scan it and uh, you know and you can run this macro, for example. Um, and then there are, there are other features with uh, the URL is the same thing. Um, it's where you encode the code directly to this super long URL, but you know you can just copy and paste. So you don't need to save this to any server. It's also good for privacy reasons. Um, and the the other thing I want to show you is the uh, image JavaScript, which uh, we we have. So this this is the wiki, right? The uh, image J wiki. Um, and so we have this image integration directly into this image J wiki. And as a result, we what we can do is that you can run image J um, JavaScript directly inside the browser, right? So when you click this run. And then it's like actually load image directly in uh, this. And this is essentially good for when you want to make some tutorial, right? For example, here, it, you can imagine some in the wiki, someone makes some image tutorial with macro, for example, right? And you can click ROM um, and then it will load and uh, the user can actually play with it. So this is an, another additional feature uh, which we try to, um, you know, um, try to make and you know, to help help the user to um, and essential for educational purpose right so you don't need to uh, ask the user to download those files and uh, it just works right so and they can also play with it um, and you can also add it here right we have this um, oh, sorry yeah I'm gonna so we have this editor where you can just click and then you know if you run again and then it will actually run uh, you know after you add it. So this is just additional features what we uh, try to in integrate with um, different website. And you can think of other use cases, for example, other database, and then you can integrate image JavaScript, right? When to edit some images on the fly or do analysis directly in the browser. Um, so I'm gonna, so, I mean, I, I already mentioned some, um, sorry, the, I already mentioned some um, image MJoy, right? So all this works because we have MJoy integration such that we can talk between different plugins. So one of the key concepts I want to mention briefly is that what we call it uh, MJoy RPC. So on the right, you have the Python code, which essentially defines a add function, right? A plus B, right? Very simple. But the, the thing is that we will run this Python code in the cloud it's supposed to actually spin up the binder server, which is free Jupyter notebook server. And we just use it to run our code, right? So when, we, when I click run here, it will actually execute this remotely in the, uh, in the cloud. And what Enjoy RPC does is that we, we will create this link between the JavaScript, which is runs in the browser. If I click run, and you will have this uh, local plugin, which runs directly in your browser. And what we did is that, for example, you can see in the code, right? What we get this plugin, and then we just call dot add. And this add is defined here, right? So we add 10 plus 99, and then if you click, and then you will get the result. And this is result is actually executed remotely. And for developers, they can just, the easy, it's very easy. They, it's all transparent to them. They just call the function remotely. It doesn't matter. It's, in the cloud or locally or across different language like JavaScript to uh, Python, for example. And this is kind of a key uh, concept which powers Enjoy and the entire uh, Enjoy plugin. And then the other one, uh, which take advantage of this, which you already see, but I will, let me just show it anyway, 
So we have this MJOY integrate directly in this slide, right? So we made our own um, MJOY slide um, tool. And then you can do this kind of teaching that you can, um, you know, you can have this uh, macro on your left and then you can run the image on the right. And this is ideal for, for example, uh, teaching, right? And you can share this slide and such so the student can also play with the same slides and then, you know, they can uh, play with the macro, for example. Um, and this is one thing, and this is another example, but let me just quickly show it anyway. I think uh, this is the color of uh, 2021, uh, was made by Jerome. Um, yeah, so okay. just, um, yeah, so this is just for fun. I just want to show. Um, okay, so yeah, let me just give this to be, um, and there's a limitation. The, there's a lot of limitation actually. So the, and these two, the first two are fundamental to the browser. So every browser, because the, the security model also are other considerations. And so every tab is essentially um, single threaded. And there's a way to do multi-threading, but it's need some tweaking. And the other one is more like fundamental to the browser at least for, for now, and I don't see it can be improved uh, in the near future, which is it can only run, it can only use less than four gigs memory because of the 32 bit uh, addressing, I think, uh, in the browser. Um, and uh, right now, this short term uh, limitations for ImageJ JavaScript is that we only support ImageJ one now. There's a branch of pull requests which we already experimented in image 2 but that one is much, much bigger and it takes a longer time to load. I was testing with Curtis and the, uh, but because I mean, there's a still a chance because image 2 is more, much more modularized with the side Java framework. So, so we have a chance to uh, divide the big, you know, program. We're not going to have a VG entirely, but we're gonna have try to be a bit more smart to divide into small pieces and load them on demand, for example. And so we have right now, we have very limited plugins. If you want to add new plugins and you need to add it manually, compile it for each one of them and not all of them will work. And also it's only support image at one. And there's also a current limitation with the file system access, but this can be uh, so addressed, uh, you know, if we get the resources to work on it. So, I mean, with all these limitations, we, we you know, it might, you know, I would ask this question that, is it just a toy then? Um, I mean, in a sense, yes, right? Because when you look at it compared to the conventional one and with, especially image two, right? It's much more scalable. Um, but I would like to show you another a different way of thinking uh, to see this problem. And we'd like to show you a bigger picture, which we are where we are heading for. So in the past, we have this computer, which you have a keyboard and a screen attached with your CPUs and in, a, a, in this um, box here, right? Um, so you, in, this is in the past. And now, nowadays, people are using more and more like laptops and um, what, you know, iPad, iPhone, which also called, in some cases, we call Sync Client, right? So you have, less uh, resources on your client, but then you try to put the computation in the cloud. And this is a bit inevitable when you think about, uh, you know, the data, the amount of data we are handling and uh, the compute uh, power we are demanding, especially for deep learning, for example. Um, although, you know, like now this mobile phones are much more powerful as well, but still this is kind of, um, uh, you know, the current, trend which is trying to bring things in to run in the cloud and also i mean there's no way to load uh you know few petabyte of data set to a laptop for example right um so this is a kind of a trend which we are moving forward and in the future just mentioned briefly uh which i'm super interested in looking to which is that uh web3 the next generation of web um and which is, there's a lot of hype in the cryptocurrency networks, but they are closely related. For example, the Web3, one of the key things is the IPFS network. And essentially trying to build the foundation to build a network which is decentralized. 
It's not like now we have only Google and this kind of very much centralized service. And in the future, you can, you know, and also a relevant concept is that you have this IoT, right? Your Internet of Things, and also uh, different. You can think of different nodes. They can be either a cluster or just a laptop, right? They are just interconnected and put a, add a lot of. Uh, um, it makes it much more resilient, right? So you, you one part of them fail and the other one can back it up. So um, so how is this relevant for us? And because in under this big picture, we are handling massive data set and heavy and long computation, especially AI and deep learning. Uh, but on the other hand, we have um, much more than, you know, I checked the 6 billion mobile users, right? We should target this kind of users in many cases. Um, and there's a mature web industry, especially those, you know, there's a lot of uh, UI libraries and uh, visualization tools. Uh, they, there's a lot of exciting new standard, which, for example, web assembly, uh, web assembly, right? This is technique really kind of revolutionizing how we see the browser because it brings the scientific stack, a lot of library directly run inside the browser, right? So this is kind of blurring the um, boundary between um, desktop and the browser and the browser essentially become an operating system. And for example, today I was saw in the news that someone also uh, compiled this kind of, uh, uh, for example, Linux directly run in the browser and they can run Python and all those different stuff, which is crazy in a sense, but this is where we are heading for. And there's also web GPU, which is super exciting, brings the, you know, a lot of uh, compute power, especially GPU to the browser. So, I mean, all this is uh, we, what we are heading for is that uh, this is some web in, work in progress. We are trying to essentially connect image JavaScript and use it as the GUI or UI for the user, such that you can run on your iPod, iPhone, you know, laptop, which is the thin client, for example. And then, you know, we want to, compute directly in the uh, cloud. I mean, not necessarily cloud, it can be just on-prime deployment. It can be a workstation in your lab, right? And it's, but the idea is you have remote Fiji, uh, for example, and one, what we are trying right now is that run ImageJ JavaScript in the browser and then connect with ImageJ RPC, which I just mentioned, this uh, transparent function course. And then we run Binder, right? So Binder is the environment uh, which is powered by Docker Kubernetes such that you can run Fiji uh, in the cloud and then you can spin up or customize your environment and make it more reproducible. And then you can connect to your uh, image. And the user don't feel much. They will just you know, open image or JavaScript and then they click a few and some of the plugins they will run in the cloud, right? And then they will still looks like the native, uh, you know, Fiji or something like that. And then of course, there are a lot of challenges we have been discussing to have this web viewers to view, visualize large, uh, massive images, trying to do, for example, for example, run the big data viewer in the cloud, right? In the remote location. And then you try to provide this kind of M5 or ZAR interface and then bridge with the web viewers. Like right now we have this visa viewer, which is, looks very promising. Um, and then the other idea is to, after we have all this, you know, we can pretend, because we have a Docker, right? We can do something similar to Binder that we don't need to uh, distribute the Fiji the same way, right? We can easily customize uh, Fiji and then, you know, run them in the browser and, uh, you know, uh, transparency. Um, distribute the compute either in the browser or in the remote location. So there's a lot of challenge but we are kind of exploring this um, direction. And, you know, also because we are quite early and one advantage we don't have, we don't, um, so we are not so scared about weak things, right? So we gives us a lot of a chance to test in different ideas. So briefly, I want to mention that this will gonna be um, you know, implemented together with the uh, BioImage IO, which is a consortium with a couple of other groups, which trying to bring the uh, pre-trained model to uh, this website and then such that user can use it. So we're gonna reuse this cloud infrastructure we built and run this kind of feature remotely and then user can use, uh, you know, image JavaScript in the browser, for example. 
and combined with deep learning and other tools. So this is my last slide, yes. Um, yeah, so of course, image is, um, is um, supported by the minds and hearts of the uh, Imjoy team. Uh, we have few people right now, but uh, with with the help of uh, you know Wayne, um, a lot of others, Curtis and uh, others from uh, Fiji Image community, also the support from the company Lean Technology, which provide a compiler. Um, yeah, we have the Twitter etc. So thank you. Thanks, both of you. Uh, yeah. Are there questions? I have a question for Wei. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. How do you how do you see the distributed uh, computer computing with, with Fiji, or how would this work? Who, who could install? Uh, who could be a node in this in this uh, network? So I yeah I think this is an interesting question to ask. I think. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other attempts as well. Some of them try to run a Fiji in a uh, classic cluster, like right? slump cluster, where you have submission node and you uh, distribute. This is one way, right? But what I I was trying to mention is that about distribu distributed um, computing with Fiji is more like, you know, for example, you have, um, let's say in the future, we have a lot of uh, Kubernetes can also run uh, on desktops, for example, right? And you have this kind of container environment distributed into different laptops, let's say, or some of them in the institutions, and then the user in the same browser environment, right? They can simultaneously talk to different instances of Fiji, right? And they can schedule the task, you know, simultaneously and then, you know, um, interact with different instances. Uh, this is just a rough idea. There's a lot of uh, things to uh, test and uh, see what works best. Um, but this is just, you know, what I have in mind. Okay. Thank you. Ulrike, yeah. <clears throat> So uh, I was just wondering, what do you do? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for both for your presentations. That was a nice overview. But what do you do in order to actually uh, gain more uh, traction on uh, uh, media, meaning to gain more developer support? Uh, because right now you said like you, you have this cloud of people who are regularly uh, participating, but I guess most of them are, might get addicted to this and uh, and always contribute for the for the or have always contributed for the last 10 up to 15 years but uh but i think it's always important to get a a fresh set of new people in in order to keep this uh alive so what's kind of the strategy in order to um is this like an organic thing like that people just join and uh, stick to it or uh um yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess you mentioned hackathons as well, which also might be a great way to actually uh, uh, make sure that community engagement is there as well. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. <clears throat> I think there's no uh, there's no effort in in this direction. It's just that new users. I mean, in the lab, you 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 can see this in in your labs as well. You have a, a steady stream of uh, new students that come every year. So if you if you if you teach them with a some software though some of them will will become more proficient and, and maybe at some at some point contribute the decrease in the plugins uh, production the apparent decrease uh, is some something uh, maybe different uh, it's maybe more that uh, a lot of uh, infrastructure uh, is, is there is, is working and stable so I think there are a lot of plugins that are uh, produced in the labs but probably very specific to a, to a given question or, and maybe they are not even shared. So um, I, I don't know, I don't know. There, there is, to my knowledge, there is no conscience, conscient effort to attract new developers. Uh, Jérôme, maybe this is, this is for you, um, I guess. What do you think it is about the macro language? Is, is it, is it, do you, do you think it's just been interesting and work in a working tool in the past and now that we have better scripting languages it'll 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 just go away or or so. or is that is there is there something something magic about it 
So, so I, I, I was never a friend of the thing. I, I have I to, know, I, I mean, I used it, I used it to record stuff, right? And to, to see what, what ImageJ internally does, but then it's mostly just, just um, unparsable uh, calls to, to plugins with some fixed set of parameters and writing something really complicated with it is, it's kind of very old school and, and Python or JavaScript are just better scripting languages, right? Yes, and I agree. I agree, but uh, I see that uh, I I do a lot of uh, image training, and I also yeah. uh, show uh, JavaScript and, and mm -hmm. Python. But uh, it takes extra effort uh, to to the students. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had a, a very good ex experience with uh, with German students. <laughs> actually, I don't know how is the situation in the U.S. or. Uh, in other places, but in France, it's they are terrible at programming. So, okay. so the, 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 the if they have to like to install Python, for example, that's that's a, an extra step, and uh, you you will lose a lot of them uh, if you have to if they have to install uh, mm. Python or learn JavaScript. They are more difficult to learn, I think. So but you don't, don't, don't you think that like, so, so I agree that there is a very easy um, um, path into getting something to work, obviously, thanks yeah. to the recorder mostly, right? Yeah. Um, but then at some point, I mean, there, there, so I've, I've met people in my life who wrote these, these very massive uh, macro language constructs. And, and they look a little bit like, like, like what people did with Perl like you use a language mm -hmm. that wasn't meant to do big stuff, but then you do it anyways, and, and it becomes this um, un, 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 undecryptable thing that, that nobody else can maintain. Yeah, I, and there I, is a little bit of a danger, I think, in that. Right? Yeah, but I, I, I think I it's the recorder. Yeah. I mean, you if we would have uh, something that would record beautiful JavaScript code or Python code that would run, mm -hmm. I think it would be good, but we don't but have it. Has a, has a JavaScript recorder, right? So, so yeah, but, then, but, but the code looks exactly like the image they macro code, right? Yeah. And then <laughs> yes. pl plus, plus when you pl press the run button, I don't think it will work because you have to import some libraries and you don't know which ones. I see. The, so the magical part, or, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. The magical part is the, the amount of uh, examples as well, as well. And all this thing, if you yeah. just Google how to do something in image macro, yes. you always get the answer. Yeah, I think it's, I don't yes. think it's because this language is so good. I think that the tooling and around the other or and the, the documentation is just not there yeah. yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, and I think nobody really, I mean, if somebody would really if, if someone work on this, it would be good. Of, uh, <laughs> translating. If you would translate, for example, uh, the the amount of uh, example macros, and have the same examples in, in Python, uh, people could uh, learn Python. It's, yeah. it's not no, no, but you're right. This, I mean, this is extremely unrealistic, so nobody's going to do yeah. this. So, yeah, yeah <laughs> and <laughs> with the Jiven is the other problem that this Jiven is still this version two point seven, right? And yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, so I think somehow that was in the detail. Little things. <laughs> There are a lot of little, uh, little things that make it uh, more difficult with any other scripting language. Even if, wh when you are familiar with, uh, or if you are uh, like a computer savvy, then you can uh, you can switch to any scripting language. That's mm. okay. But the problem is the new users. They 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 are already learning uh, like image processing. They are usually more interested in their biology, <laughs> so they do not make the extra effort to to learn a proper. Scripting language, but but do you think is is it possible like do an automatic translation between the macro to JavaScript, for example? I mean, how hard it can be because people does Java to JavaScript already, for example, which is much harder. Um, but do you think it's realistic to aim for something like that? I think it's sometimes impossible because the API is not uh, there are no public methods for some of the things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then you can't actually write proper code. This is at least my experience some, sometimes. So it's not always, I mean, then you still have all this ij.run with a big string things. Yeah, for, for the, but how is that better than, I mean, then I don't know. <laughs> for the commands, it would be okay. But for the, the macro language functions, they are really tight to, to imaging and, and to the macro language. 
would be difficult. But it, I, I don't think I don't see it as a, as a, as a problem, because uh, I, the problem that I see, is, and this is also why uh, IJ the, the JS is a very good educational tool, because the 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 difficult part is to get people to to write their first code, and then if they like it, they can they can then learn something else. It's more like an entry point. Uh, you you have a low you have an even worse. Uh, beginner uh, systems like uh, brick programming, but they are never really good. Uh, you, you cannot really achieve something uh, complete, I think, with a, with a brick programming. So macro language is maybe a good uh, in between. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And if, if they can then be uh, get interested in, in, in programming for, for the image processing, then maybe they can look at uh, more complicated examples we, we gain we gain uh, knowledge uh, with age <laughs> but the the new users they are always fresh and they they you start with uh, with new students every year so that you have to you have to start uh, to restart from the, from the beginning every every year so they need something simple uh, Asta, you had a question Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jerome, you mentioned uh, the uh, IJ Galaxy, so, uh, and you also mentioned that it's not being developed currently. And I was wondering if there's a particular reason that you hit a roadblock there, because it, to me, it seems like a pretty great uh, idea or tool. Uh, yes, <clears throat> I liked it a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I can share, it. it's very easy. Um, I, I can share the code with you if you if you. There's also a, a full uh, tool set, Galaxy tool set for image processing, but I, I'm not sure it has been updated recently. And and I think that uh, uh, it's now much more. I did this did this for uh, like an external client that 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 needed uh, uh, to rate images for for a certain disease, uh, plant seeds. Uh, so he, he, and it, they, they knew nothing about uh, image processing, so they need a simple way of uh, uploading images and, and get the rating. Uh, but I think the image.js provides now a much uh, easier uh, way to do this. If I have, a, if I have to restart such a project, I, I will probably do it with uh, image.js and just share the, the, the protocol. You can share the you can way it show that you can like, uh, open uh, a script uh, from a URL, but you can also run it. So it's really, really easy to, to just, just run it from the URL. So you don't have to install any, any server. It's, not, it's, it's probably not necessary, but I, I will share the code with you anyway. Thank you. Yes, I would say for the sake of the time, um, uh, Christian, I think it's, uh, we yeah. can, Maybe thank the speakers again. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, so as I said, thank you very much for the nice overview. And uh, with that, I actually uh, can say that we have um, the, so the last talk of uh, the second season of our combined seminar series is uh, is approaching in in August, and uh, we are actually delighted to have. Uh, Timo Zimmermann uh, giving a presentation, I guess, about this new uh, imaging center at EMBL. But uh, Christian, maybe you have a, a few more insights about this or so, uh, which you would like to uh, know. <laughs> no. well, that, that was pretty much to the point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. And and you can actually all be excited because uh, the MBL and also the uh, Janila team, we are ready. We are getting ready to prepare the the third half year slot uh, of interesting speakers uh, planning to uh, to run from September until uh, February. So uh, please, everyone, stay tuned. This will be uh, very exciting. And uh, with that, uh, let's let's thank the speakers again. And um, yeah, see you in in August. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was, was so... good to see you. It was good to see you. Bye. Okay.